Back here on One on One, New York's longest running sports call in show, Jackson High, alongside Emmanuel Rivari. And now we introduce a very special guest to a show, a man of many titles, 18 year major leaguer, seven time AL batting champion, the 1977 AL MVP, baseball Hall of Famer, and now the author of One Tough Out, Fighting Off Life's Curveballs. Baseball great, Rod Crew. Rod, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm good, guys. Thanks so much for having me on. And thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate it. Obviously, a crazy time in the world with the quarantine happening with COVID-19 and so much around the world. How has it been going for you in quarantine? What's life been like for you recently? Well, you know, um, since my my immune system is uh, uh, keeping me home because of, you know, having a heart attack and the, and the kidney uh, transplant, and I mean, the heart attack, transplant and kidney transplant um i have to really stay away from people so i just lock myself up and uh, you know just stay away and, and try to be as safe as possible so that i i don't hurt myself but um i hope you guys are staying safe we appreciate that rod you talked about the heart transplant in the book what was that entire experience like for you well, it was scary, I must say, but you know, um, you know, as as I prayed to God, I just told him, you know, I says I'm I'm not afraid to die, and if you want to take me, I says just go right ahead, and I guess he decided to to leave me here to continue doing some of his work, because I I spend a lot of time trying to uh, do some work with the cancer kids and cancer awareness and other, you know, charitable uh, events. So he's given me another chance. So I'm going to take advantage of it, use it in the best way I can. And, um, you know, as my my uh, idol, Jackie Robinson, used to say, you, you can make the difference in someone's life. And if you've given that opportunity, why not? So I'm, I'm going right along that that route right now. Rod, let's talk about your book, One Tough Out, Fighting Off Life's Curveball, talking a ton about your life experiences growing up in Panama, coming over to New York, and then playing in the major leagues and all the adversity you faced throughout your illustrious career. What led you to write that book, and what were the motivating factors behind becoming an author? Well, I think, you know, first of all, I want to give kudos to Reggie Jackson because he, he named the book. And um, I, I think he did a great job in, in, in giving a name to, to the book, you know, and so I've got to give uh, kudos to him. But, you know, it's, um, you know, when my youngest daughter passed away, um, I didn't talk to the press that much. And so I'm, you know, standing there and we're checking in at Children's Hospital and she saw all these kids running around the, the lobby with their hockey pucks and their basketballs and their soccer balls, pulling their poles and kicking, you know, soccer balls and stuff. And she just kind of came up next to me. She says, dad, she says, no matter what happens to me, you, you've got to help these kids. So I would like you to open yourself up a little bit and talk to the press more because the more uh, publicity that we can get, maybe we can save some of these kids lives. So she was the main person in having me uh, open myself up, telling my story in hopes that we can reach people uh, to, to help. And um, she was something else. Rod, you talked about making the most of this chance that you've been given and you've saved countless lives. You've promoted bone marrow registry and raised millions of dollars for uh, pediatric cancer research and the fight against that. What would be your advice to some of the current players on how to properly use their platform to influence change, whatever it may be? Well, you know, if they're going to do something, they have to get involved because that's what I told the people from PCRF. You know, I just, I just don't want to use my name and not believe in something or work with something to to show improvement. And I think that the current players, if, if they are going to get involved, 
you know, you, you have to get involved all, all the way. You can't do it part time. Rod, obviously a lot of the adversity that you've mentioned has come off the field, but on the field, being African-American in baseball, especially at a time coming not too long after Jackie Robinson broke the barrier, had to have been certainly an interesting time for you. What was it like being African-American in baseball back in the 1970s for you, and what type of adversity did you face there? Well, you know, I came from a country where, you know, I faced a lot of uh, racism. So um, when, when it happened to me, I just did not, it didn't faze me. Because, you know, what my mother always raised me and, and she always said to me, you know, we're all God's children and I want you to be nice to people and um, God is going to bless you and he's going to be with you all the time. So remember these words I'm saying, because this is what I'd like you to do. Be humble. Don't change because you're playing baseball and, you know, you're in a position where you can say no, no, no to everyone instead of saying yes. So her influence uh, also played a big part in the way I live my life today that, um, you know, besides God, uh, that's why I, I come out and I talk about things that I think are very important to me and, and very important to a lot of other people. How do you think baseball can do a better job attracting more African-American players moving forward into the future? Well, you know, it's crazy because I was um, doing some work at the baseball academy here in Compton. And I would travel, I think, about 100 miles every time I went there uh, to work with, the, with these kids. And we have to st start telling kids you know, that um, school is very important. Sports is not all, you know, there is in life. And unless you use your brain that was given to you uh, by God, then you're doing a disservice. So study, you know, if you have a talent, study so that maybe some schools can look at you and give you the opportunity to, to uh, play and make a life for yourself. And seen at this Compton uh, school, we weren't getting that many African-American kids. They were going to basketball and football. And, and as much as I tried to tell them that, you know, in baseball, you don't have to be big and strong and tall, that as long as you have the heart to learn and play the game, uh, anybody can go out there and do it if, if, if you're willing to uh, give up of yourself and put in the hard work. And so, you know, uh, if you look at colleges today, you don't see too many uh, African-American kids playing in colleges. And I think that that's because, you know, they're going to the other sports or they're not studying enough to um, go to these academies and learn and um, get themselves in a good position where you know, their futures uh, can be bright. Speaking with first ballot baseball hall of famer, Rod Carew, Rod, focusing on your career a bit, when you talk about a lot in the book, um, take, you take us through that 1977 season, obviously so magical, the chase for 400 and trying to chase Ted Williams's record there. What was that experience like for you going through that head to head in the MVP race with Reggie Jackson, who you mentioned before was the <laughs> man who was responsible for the title of this book? Yeah, it, it's crazy. You know, um, I just didn't have any peace because wherever I go, people always wanted to talk about the Ted Williams uh, 400 mark. And, you know, I, I honestly did not set out to hit 400. You know, my job as a hitter is to try and get as many hits as you can to to help the ball club. And then all of a sudden, you know, staying close to 400 for a while, um, it just it just blew up. You know, it blew up, and I just um, tried to handle it the best way I could because it, it got to the point where it was affecting me on the field because I would make a couple of mistakes, and then I would go into to my manager, Gene Mark, and sit down and talk with him about talking to the press, 
you know, putting a, a certain time limit and when I would talk and when I would be left alone so that, you know, I can do my on field work and and uh not be bothered bothered as much. But um it was a tough uh, situation and um I appreciated it because you know, Ted is one of the great hitters and uh, when you talk to him about hitting you learn something and um it, it was a fascinating year. You know, it just seems like the baseball came up to home plate and it stopped and say, hit me, hit me, hit me, <laughs> you know. So, you know, so I I put the head of my bat on the ball. You know, I was fortunate enough to, to, to get a lot of base hits. And plus, you know, I used the whole field to hit. I wasn't just a, a pull hitter. You know, I, I used the whole field to hit and, uh, I think that's why I had so much success. How do you feel a 60 game season will impact the record books potentially? You'll have batting champions, maybe MVPs, Cy Youngs who are part of an abbreviated season. Well, I don't know. I don't think it's a full season and I don't think that they should be merited with, with that stuff. But um, my concern is that we have so many guys right now that has the the uh, pandemic uh, uh, coronavirus, and um, I worry about their health. I worry worry about their families, and um, you know I I don't want to watch baseball with it with with the stands being empty. If I'm going to do that, I'm going to turn my television on and go to my favorite spot, which is uh, the Western stations, and watch. All my old cowboy movies, you know, with Hopalong Cassidy and Roy Rogers. And and so that's what I'm doing right now. You know, my TV is on that station and that's that's all I care about. Baseball, I don't worry too much about right now. I just worry about the players. Rod, you mentioned that you wouldn't really want to watch baseball without fans. Um, being a former player yourself and being one of the great former players yourself, how do you think not having fans will affect the players today when they take the field on what seems like July 23rd or 24th? Well, I think they're going to do it more, more so for the financial part. And to me, uh, the financial part is good, but also your health to me is more important because, you know, every year that you play this game, that's the main thing that we all ask for, you know, give us good health and we're going to go out there and do our jobs and, and play well and, and walk off the field knowing that we did that. But if they continue trying to make this a, a short season, I think it's, it's more for the financial part of it than anything else. So many fans, Rod, got caught up in the financial battle, the back and forth to make sure that the season would happen because they were anticipating the return of sports. Do you think it's possible that the league may be rushed back and possibly there shouldn't be sports in the year 2020? Well, I think so. I think they should be more concerned with uh, athletes' uh, health because without that, you have nothing, you know, um, People used to ask me every year, well, are you going to win another bag title? Are you going to do this? Are you going to do that? And I always used to answer answer them by saying, you know, if God gives me good health, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to work hard, and I'm going to have a good year. If I don't have my health, then it's a struggle. And I think, you know, I, I hope these guys realize this and make sure that they're doing that they're going to try and start the season uh, for good reasons and not not for the sake of the almighty dollar. Rob, before we wrap things up, um, baseball now looks a lot different than when you played the game of baseball and just the way it's played. I mean, it's so much home run or strikeout now as it compared to the way you played the game where it was getting the ball bat on the ball anytime you can. What do you make of the state of the game of baseball and the direction it's heading in terms of the product on the field? Well, you know, some of us can hit the ball out of the ballpark and some of us can't. I was one of those that I could probably uh, could have hit, 
maybe 20 home runs or 25 home runs a year. But my my consistency would have struggled. I I wouldn't have done, I think, as well as I did by using the whole field to hit. And, you know, not everyone are going to hit the ball out of the park. There are certain guys that can do it, and certain guys you have to just let them hit and play the game of getting on base and scoring runs. Um, but you spoil some of these kids by – forcing them to lift the ball. And, you know, like you said earlier, uh, going into the All-Star game last year, we had more uh, strikeouts than base hits. And I I just hated walking back to the dugout, lugging my bat after I struck out. So I don't know how these guys feel about it, you know, when they strike out 150, 200 times a year. That's no fun. Fun is letting that that little white baseball hit the green grass. Some great insight from the one and only Rod Carew, the first ballot baseball Hall of Famer, former MVP and seven-time batting champ as well. And in addition to being a new author of One Tough Out, Fighting Off Life's Curveballs. Rod, thank you so much for taking the time. We really appreciate you joining the show. All the best and the best of health to you going forward in this pandemic. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys, and uh, stay safe. Thanks, Rod. Okay.